Manila is a massive place. It's 440 years old. Metro Manila has 20 million people in it, and it's said to be the world's most densely populated city. I traveled to Manila based on several food postcards that I received that were actually recipes for really interesting dishes. So I was invited by a food critic in Manila to join him on a full day of food tasting from breakfast through dinner, all the Filipino cuisine I could eat. Well, I'm not gonna bite into a whole clove of garlic. <laughs> To start things out, we decided to go for street food. So we headed down to Carriedo Street, where they were selling all manner of different types of cuisine. <laughs> Chanel garlic baby wipes. The whole package. Very first dish that I had was balut, which is a hard boiled duck embryo, duck fetus, the vendor said the orange coating made it look more appetizing. There it is. <laughs> first thing in the morning, this is my very first meal. Is we also had some quail eggs with our balut. Truth be told, I actually enjoyed the balut. If you remove from your mind that it is a duck embryo and just eat it, it tastes pretty good. After that, had some taho, which is a Filipino comfort food, sort of like a snack. It's soft tofu, flavored syrup, and pearl sago, which I thought looked like fish eggs. Expression to delight, please. I'm open to all new things. Ah, okay, uh, this is good. Not at all. After street food, we actually walked over to neighboring Chinatown for more cuisine. Went into a pastry and bread shop pick up some hopia and some pandan. We lingered about at an LGA fast food corner, but decided the smells were a little bit too pungent and uh, headed out for the more reasonable Chuan Ki which was a sort of sit-down restaurant slash cafeteria style. Had some fried rice, some pork and vegetables. It's good, right? It's really good. It's good. Bok choy. And the bridge. <laughs> and some pig ear. While sitting in Chuan Ki, I was able to have the pandan cake and the hopia. It's like a fig noodle. One of my least favorite things I tried in Chinatown was the tikoi, which is essentially glutinous rice, flour, corn, and sugar. <laughs> One powerful element of Filipino cuisine is called counterpoint. It's the pairing of sweet, salty, and sour elements into one plate, which can be a little off-putting to limited palates, and at the very least, quite different. On the way out of Chinatown to get some of the tastes out of my mouth, I had a chew on some sugar cane. Mm. I told you that was not real beef. <laughs> That's not real beef. Not quite. Strict Filipino fast food would be Jollibee which was our next stop. Interestingly enough, to get into the Jollibee, you have to pat down security. By all indications, Jollibee looks exactly like a Western fast food restaurant. I ordered the Champ, and Mike wanted me to try Palabo. 
Palabo is noodles and shrimp sauce and fish paste. Good, no? Huh? Oh, God. <laughs> oh, that's the worst thing we've had today. Don't need it anyway. There's a public hospital. That could be an option we want to explore later on. No, we did take a break in the afternoon to go to the Manila Hotel, enjoy a tropical fruit shake, drink some water, and listen to some classical music, just so that my stomach didn't explode. We also took a walk around Intramuros to get a little bit of culture and see a little bit of older historical Manila. Because it's a buffet, right. we have to get our money's worth. That's a Filipino. We have to get our money's worth. The coup de grace, shall we say, was the buffet, which came as our dinner, the last bit of eating that we did. The buffet had all manner of Filipino cuisine. It was exactly what this day had been designed for. And you could essentially eat as much as you want of all of the different type of dishes. So I dove right in. I had fried crickets, seaweed salad, suckling pig, which is the national dish of the Philippines, beef marrow soup, crablets, stew with offal and tripe in peanut sauce, pig blood stew, pork ear and deep fried tofu, water buffalo, ox tongue, Deep fried piglet. The whole thing. The whole thing. All right, what's this? Let's quickly go on to this. I'll tell you after you eat it. The best dish of the day by far was Bolalo soup, which is the beef marrow soup. It was excellent. I would order it if I saw it on a menu anywhere in the world again, for sure. The worst was definitely the crablet, which we actually didn't capture on film. I immediately had to spit it out, and I never spit out food. It was so heinously disgusting. I, I would never have that again. It was awful. Now, do you think we've reached the point at which we're eating too much food? Actually, no. Dessert in the Philippines is not quite what Western desserts are. There's a lot less sweet and a lot more savory. And even at the buffet where they tried to do a chocolate fondue, I think that was the most disgusting chocolate I've had in my entire life. Today is the 23rd. That's not Filipino, but it is very Kevin. Everyone has an opinion on food. What's good, what's disgusting, will be debated from now until the end of time. There were several Filipino dishes I thought were amazing, and some less so. And the only advice I can give to fellow travelers is to try the food. You can never know if you'll enjoy hard-boiled duck embryo, bone marrow soup, or fried crickets, until you open yourself up to the idea that they might actually taste good. I enjoyed all three. Maybe you will too. Uh, it's all, it's all in here, problem. but it's excellent. I mean, it's amazing. Oh, very good. Would you buy sushi from a bakery?